Alaska Airlines has been operating out of Seattle, Washington for nearly seven decades. However, the company's name and its branding represents the state of Alaska with pride. So why is the firm based approximately 1,200 nautical miles away? Alaska Airlines traces its roots back to 1932, when Linnaeus Mac McGee put his name on a Stinson plane and started flying out of Anchorage, the largest municipality in Alaska. It later merged with McGee Airways in 1934 to form the largest carrier in the state. This new outfit had 22 planes, but at the time, operations weren't scheduled. Typically, aircraft would take off when they were full of either passengers or goods. Nonetheless, the company continued to grow, taking over Alaska Interior Airlines in 1937. By the early part of the 1940s, the carrier was operating under the moniker of Alaska Star Airlines. In 1943, it acquired a series of businesses, including Miro Air Service, Pollack Airlines, Lavery Airways, and Alaska Air Motive. With its new holdings, the company finally ran with the name Alaska Airlines in 1944. After World War II, the charter services overshadowed scheduled operations. Subsequently, Alaska became the largest charter operator across the globe, deploying the military surplus DC-4s and C-46s to carry food in the Berlin airlift and transport 49,000 Jewish refugees from Yemen. Ultimately, Alaska Airlines was now running an operation that was too large for its base at Merrill Field in Anchorage. The firm needed more space for its fleet and staff. Therefore, the operator's president, James Wooten, had a talk with plane manufacturing powerhouse Boeing. The businessman negotiated with the aircraft producer to house its operating headquarters at Payne Field. This location was at the Boeing Service Center, with Alaska Airlines situated in the northwest corner of the airfield. So, this was the moment that the carrier first moved its headquarters outside of Alaska. However, it was still approximately 40 miles away from its current home of Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. The facilities at Payne Field were built in 1936, and the intention was for it to be a sizable commercial airport. However, it became a base for official operations during World War II. According to Payne Field's website, Alaska Airlines may have also used the large World War II military hangar at the site. The field was reactivated by the Air Force and subsequently became a base for the military during the Korean War in the early 1950s, pushing back its commercial expansion dreams. 1951 saw the airline reach a milestone when it was given authority to fly from Anchorage and Fairbanks to Seattle and Portland. Following this move in 1953, Alaska Airlines moved its corporate headquarters to downtown Seattle. However, it still maintained a maintenance hangar at Payne Field. Snohomish County authorities had built a hangar for the carrier at the southern end of the field three years later. As the 1950s came to a close, Alaska's operations continued to develop smoothly. As the 1960s came by, the jet age was causing a storm within the aviation industry. In order to keep up with its competitors, Alaska jumped on the craze and deployed jet aircraft including the Convair 880. Altogether, with the dawn of a new generation and Alaska Airlines' strong position in the market, the carrier was now a fully Seattle-based outfit. This transition was complete when it moved its maintenance team to Seattle-Tacoma in 1963. Today, along with several national and international operations, the airline still serves many airports across Alaska. The carrier remains an important entity for connections across the state and has a hub at Ted Stevens Anchorage International Airport. Meanwhile, the firm has managed to do well on the US's Pacific coast. Along with its subsidiary, Horizon Air, Alaskan Airlines accommodates approximately 22 million passengers per year at Seattle-Tacoma. This figure represents about half of all the traffic at the hub. What do you think about Alaska Airlines' relocation to Seattle? Have you ever flown with a carrier? Share your experience in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.